Yes. Okay. Okay. Please tell me is uh, you can hear like so I have to start again. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I was saying I will spend uh, uh, it's like four parts. The first part I will talk about Clit for algebras. Uh, the second part about uh, a little bit of operator theory. Then the most juicy part will be the radiation conditions. That will be like the technical part or, or the and then some applications. So, so uh, for me, the language is going to be slightly different that uh, for many of you. By a clit for algebra, I will denote it by CLM. It's going to be the enlargement of CM, such that I will use a dot, th this product, for the clit for algebra. So x times a uh, clit for algebra product x will be minus the norm of x. And so it's not, not signature or signature m. Uh, so we had only two, if we had uh, standard, the standard orthonormal basis, the clit for algebra is generated with these two relations. e to the square is equal to minus 1 and they anti commute. And um, yes, like this. Okay. No, it's the point. It's, it, this fell down. If I do it like, okay, let's see. Let's, I, I do it as many times as needed. But okay. Um, so with these two relations, we generate the clit for algebra, making all the products. So it will be the uh, so any element will be the increasing, uh, strictly increasing uh, of these basic uh, elements in, in increasing order. I mean, with the with the multiplicative unit, and it will take it as a natural Hilbert structure. So the dot product will be denoted by this, and uh, we had a few uh, like the clit for conjugation will be this and extended linearly, and, uh, and also the complex conjugation will be just to take this, uh, the conjugate on, on each component. And I want to split it, so to take it the, for, for any L in 0 and M, we are going to take the elements of order L, and we call the branch by lambda LM, so it will be the homogeneous part of degree L, and this will split our clit for algebra as uh, follows. So these are the scalars, just 
uh, elements on, on uh, multiplicative uh, uh, complex, just the complex numbers. These are C, the, the zero degree elements. So the one degree elements are going to be vectors. This is just a copy of CL, CM. Then the bivectors and so on. And this, this, uh, this will be uh, interesting. Well, these are like differential forms, th these degrees. Um, we are going to take functions defined with values on the Euclid for algebra. So for us, a scalar will be something that is here. A vector, a vector field will be something that it, his values are just here, and so on. And that will give us some freedom to do certain things. Uh, anyways, when we take the a, vec a vector and we take a, a u a homogeneous of degree j, and we do the clit for product because of these two relations, the degree will either increase one or decrease one. And I'm going to call the exterior product the part that goes up and the interior product the, the part that's go down. So th this is like saying that the Euclid for algebra is really the exterior algebra plus the inner product. That, that's the original um, definition of Euclid for. So the, the Grassmann algebra plus the inner product. And these are, are here. And so what we have is this, this relation, uh, the Clifford product, like the inner and the, the exterior product and the inner product. And we extended linearly for any U uh, with this uh, splitting that I was saying before. So this uh, Clifford algebra formalism is going to say, well, we take an element in the complex, it's just multiplication and this is zero. Two vectors will be the inner product, and this is the exterior product of uh, that we have this is. And a little bit of uh, algebra, a slight lemma, just to show you the algebraic formalism. If we do this twice, it's going to be zero, just because of degrees. Uh, also, the the adjoint of the inner product will be the exterior product, and so on. And the next property is when we do a little bit of geometry. And I'm going to say exactly what is this. Uh, is we take two, two vectors. First, we do the exterior product, the interior product. I'm sorry. I am not, este, the interior, then the exterior with, a, with B and A. And the same thing, but first, now with the exterior, first A, and now B. And we have this is equal to the inner product with U. This is just linear algebra, but it's going to be important. Uh, and so what this really allows is that if we take a vector U of norm 1, we can decompose this as the normal part for any element on the Euclid for algebra as the tangential part and, and the normal part. And we also had a Pythagoras theorem like this one. And I want to show you this picture that I want to put it. It's, it's uh, very elementary because uh, the first time I learned about um, the quaternions was from Adolfo and he showed me a picture like this one. Like, um, and um, then he put the, this back and the orthogonal groups and so on. And well, this is exactly what we had here: the 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 orthogonal and the tangential. I may say it backwards, anyways. So this is the clit for algebra formalism that I was telling you about, and a bit of clit for analysis. It's just the Dirac operator will be uh, to take this, the partial, take the Clifford product with the base and to sum 
And we are going to take functions, define it on some domain in Rn, C1, and with values on the Euclid for algebra. Huh? And the standard in this, this system is to call it monogenic, which is... Uh, uh, for us, more important will be the, the perturbate Dirac operator, is to take a k. And here, by the way, I forgot to say, there is an n and an m. And we are going to be working on the bigger algebra. And, sorry. And um, for the perturbate operator, will be to take k and to take an extra unit and to make the Dirac plus this time. And these two are important because the Dirac to the square is minus the Laplacian and dk to the square is minus the Henhol operator. So any function which is monogenic will have harmonic components and any function which is k-monogenic will have um, Helmholtz uh, um, components. And uh, also we can do with this uh, the Hodge the Ram uh, formats list like this. We are going to define the exterior derivative and the interior derivative is just to take the EJs with the exterior product and the, the EJs with the, the interior product with, this, with the negative sign. And from this, it follows that then the Dirac operator will be the sum of these two, that uh, like the exterior product is just the, for scalar value, is just the gradient of the function. And so we automatically get that d to the square uh, and delta to the square is zero. And we have this uh, factorization of the Laplacian. And um, so the time for me, time harmonic Maxwell system will be two functions with uh, C infinity with values in the Euclid for algebra, which satisfy this system. So the, the, the interior derivative of E equal to E k H and the exterior derivative of uh, H equal to E k uh, minus E k E. And uh, very important is that if they satisfy the Maxwell system, then of course the E is zero and delta H is zero, and E and H are solutions to the Maxwell uh, to the Helmholtz operator. Okay. Uh, this is a bit technical, but just to, to s telling you that this uh, is like a, a integration by parts or, or derivation. The way these operators act with this uh, 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 multiplication for the exterior product and uh, and the, the, the interesting part of this, I'm not going to go over all the details here, but the, the, the point to make is here. Is we had a null, a null solution of the Helmholtz operator, then this function will satisfy the, also the Helmholtz operator. And what, what is this function? This is the harmonic uh, oscillator. So this is something that for us should be in the books, in, in any elementary books, uh, that something satisfied Helmholtz, then this, the harmonic oscillator, is uh, also Helmholtz. And things will get uh, a bit more complicated than that, but these two. And so it's more like a language. So that, that I, I'm just showing you the language. Okay, so this is our, now let me go to, to really business. Um, the radiation conditions. So we will work on an exterior domain. So this is uh, really in scattering theory, like what we want to do in, in the sense the, the, this is to do, it's like going all the way with the scattering theory in, in, in M dimensions with values in clean for algebras. And I'm going to show you just the first step. So we take an exterior domain, that's the complement of a compact set in Rn. We take a wake number. So we take a, the, usually the Henhol operator, it's a, it's a wave. 
this is a modulated segway. And for us, the fundamental solution of the handhold operator, uh, I remind you, is it's a phi k. It's a hank is given in terms of a Hankel function of this order, normalized with uh, some values. Okay, I, I know <laughs> I can see some faces, but this is this is a function. Um, yeah, I am not going to be that technical with these kind of things, but. Um, so the non-radiation condition, the, as I said, we are going to study some set of functions. And the, the, the delicate part came here. That's in the radiation conditions. So in 1912, Sommerfeld introduced this condition for a function to, to solve a boundary value problem, to get uniqueness. And the condition was uh, in terms of the function u and in terms of his derivative. Turns out to be, they have to, de to decay in this order as x goes to infinity. And it's, uh, it's a nice condition, has to do with, uh, has some analysis and some algebra in it. So that, that's, that's what, what we find. Uh, and um, so he came with this condition, and he proved that uh, then you had a uniqueness for a, a Dirichlet problem in the exterior domain, and um, was very useful for scalar functions. But on the other hand, in three dimensions for the Maxwell system, which I take the usual standard Maxwell system. In R3 is, is this. The, the radiation condition for these kind of functions were given by Mueller and Silver, and these are these, these two. And we start seeing that from this and this, they, they look very different. So part of our job was to understand why they, they look so different. I mean, as I said, a solution of Maxwell is also a solution of Henkels. But the, the solution, the, the conditions are, are completely different. And so the, the part of the things that uh, kind of more than summary is that um, uh, the um, kind of the reason, I'm not going to say the reason completely, but is that in this context, we had several factorization of the Laplace operator. So this is the standard one. We had also with the Dirac operator, and we had with the with this uh, delta. So for for each one factorization, we had one condition. And uh, and um, so th that's why they look so different. So we had many conditions. And so the, the, I'm going to go for one theorem. Let me see. I had many things. OK. I am fine. So we take a, an exterior domain. This is the first main theorem. And we fix some cake. And we had a solution of the Henholz operator. And the following radiation conditions will be equivalent one with the Dirac operator and with the function that decays of this order. And once we had a, the, the radiation conditions are more given in, in this sense, this is point-wise, but it's really, it's, it's really a whole of, of set functions. It's, we can give it with a small o, we can give it with a, in L2, we can give it in, in several versions in L2, and we can give it with big O, with a different degree. So what really means is that the class of functions kind of self improves in this, uh, with these conditions. Uh, and um, really, in, in it's it's a uh, a Schwarz inequality that that have, we prove it in the other way. It is really what it really means. So this is one condition, 
with the Dirac operator, we had another with the delta and, and with, the, with the serial derivative and with the interior derivative and with these products. And these conditions will generalize um, Silver Mueller. Also, we can even say things about the scalar cases. In the, in the scalar case, uh, this condition is new, that we can decompose the Sommerfield radiation condition as these N conditions. And I use a small O here and big O, and all can change with the small and big. We actually got a huge uh, number of equivalents. And this is the standard Sommerfield radiation conditions. Uh, and why are these important? That, that's what I want to give you a little bit of a taste why, why these radiation conditions are important. Well, in part, they are important because having a radiation condition will be equivalent to having a, um, an integral representation formula. And here we had one. Uh, so in, also we can work with the, the boundary of the domain could be, uh, here I put a exterior alpha regular, just very bad, could be very bad. I'm not going to enter in the details. Uh, uh, and so B will denote the unit, the outward unit normal. And so we had uh, radiation conditions if and only if we get integral representations. So like this one, we have the product uh, of the function in the boundary, the normal, and the fundamental solution of the decay of that one, and plus another term. So th this is very similar to Co Cauchy's integral representation formula. And we have other two. In the case of uh, with the delta and, and exterior, we have it complete, completely different. This in the uh, literature in R3 is called the Staton Chu formula. And engineers use it uh, in, in three dimensions. And we had the standard, the, the, the green formula with the normal derivative. And, and, and this is the also. So each one of these are equivalent. But there are different. The three of them are, are different. So there are like um, uh, the degree that we had uh, uh, can do things. OK. Uh, so let me do a few applications of this uh, representation formulas. So we are going to say that the function that satisfied uh, handholds will be radiating. Is it satisfy any of the conditions? For this kind of functions, we are going to get uh, some asymptotic behavior at infinity, which is like as follow. We are going to have, uh, we can split our function in the radial part, that's going to be this part, really easy, and some angular part. So the angular part will be a function defined on the sphere with values on the clit for algebra that is called the far field pattern and is really used in many applications in, in, uh, in R3 in, or R2. And, and that has uh, like this. And the, the, the nicest thing about this is that the, the for uh, the, the far field mapping that is to associate each radiating function is far field is a one to one uh, function. And it's, that's used a lot for, for scattering theory. theory. And I put just a, a few, uh, it's a C infinite function on the, the sphere. Uh, Yeah, I, I well. Also, the the far field pattern encodes uh, information, and we can do some uh, uh, some uh, calculus uh, similar. 
And we had integral representation formulas, actually, for, for each. I didn't want to put you many uh, details. Many, uh, but for, for each integral representation formula, we had a formula for, for the fat field pattern. And uh, so, as I was saying, the fat, the fat field pattern gives us, it's like the DNA of the function. And one application, so if we consider a differential operator with now the alpha and clit for product, either exterior or interior, and we take this uh, radiating function and we take the, the then the function u applied to this differential operator is also radiating, that's clear. But what's important is that the, the far field pattern is just given like this. It's, it's just, uh, we, we had similar to Fourier transform. We had uh, the uh, calculus similar to the Fourier transform. And as a corollary, we get that the, this, uh, the far field pattern for du is just multiplication by w, and by delta is multiplication by EK minus ek w with the interior product. So in particular, we are going to be able to read where, whether a, a Maxwell or K monogenic from the far field pattern. And th this is uh, this corollary. Suppose that we had two radiating uh, functions, then E and H solve the Maxwell system if and only if the, the far field patterns are, are related by these two relations. So the, the, what are we saying? The, well, and we, we, let me explain this with the K monogenic. We can also say we've got a radiating function and we're gonna say that it's radiating if and only if his far field pattern is a divisor of zero of this form. And this is interesting also because it, U is a satisfied second order system. And here we are saying that we satisfy a first order system just from knowing his value at infinity. That, that, that's, that's the, the nice part of this. And, uh, okay, we can also say the following. <laughs> this is just uh, an extra unit in, in, in the clit for algebra. We start with the N or, or M units in, in our M plus one. Um, so, is we got a radiating function, and we take the uh, harmonic oscillator of the function. As I said before, this turns out to be Helmholtz. But to be radiating turns out to be really technical. This is a technical part, and but we prove it. And also, we prove something really nice, uh, I, I think, that we didn't expect it that his far field pattern turns out to be of the radiating of oscillator of U, turns out to be to take the far field pattern of U and take the extension of this in the, in the, the harmonic oscillator of U, which is well, def well defined, it, and that turns out to be the far field pattern. And this will give me some <laughs> Geometry that that last uh, this last result. I, I hoping that now you will see some geometry. So let me remind you what's the Casimir operator. The Casimir operator will be to take all the harmonic oscillators to the square, or, or given this way or this way. And so if we do the corollary twice. So if we take a radiating function, then we apply the Casimir operator, we get a radiating function, and that function has its fat free pattern will be the Laplace-Beltrami operator of, of the function. 
So in the sense, the, the Casimir operator has far field pattern equal to the Laplace Beltrami operator. I think this is nice. At least for okay. Um, and with that, I finish. Actually, I finish on time. So um, I. What is. Hey. Ah, you see, I had an extra slice. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that's the version. Oh, man. Uh, uh, I had a picture of Adolfo uh, there in my exam. Adolfo was my undergraduate thesis advisor, and it has been only a quarter of a century since I finished with him. <laughs> so, and he, well, I really want to, to, to show uh, the picture and also not to, to really, uh, to, to, to say that I thank you to you for, I mean, I, I think Adolfo gives always, I mean, he was a wise man 25 years ago. Uh, and now he's officially a wise man. Uh, uh, and and uh, he always gives like the right advice, uh, and he he gave me a lot uh, uh, that time. I mean, and I really appreciate it, and I really want to be here, and thank you for all the things you do. Thank you. And let me give you a small present. And, and now I, I can take a picture with him because <laughs> another, another picture that uh, the one I okay thank you sure. And then you do that for many, many, uh, many directions. And here, the, 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 the main point is that these guys had the information for the, the what is the boundary like. They, 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 they give, they have the information. You can reconstruct from, from these guys, reconstruct the boundary of the object. 